Hello friends, welcome to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. Today we are continuing the Fall Classic King of the Hill Tournament, and it's getting good. We're going to look at the standings in just a minute. We have a matchup from history that uh, is one of those great what-ifs. A couple of pennant winners, one pennant winner and one World Series winner facing off today at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. It's the 1968 Detroit Tigers, our current King of the Hill, hosting the 1952 Brooklyn Dodgers. It's going to be Preacher Rowe, the lefty, on the mound for the Dodgers, and I thought long and hard about going with a right-hander, Ben Wade or Billy Lowe's, uh, against these Tigers, but ultimately I came back to Preacher Rowe, the Tigers are just a good offensive team, no matter what kind of pitcher you throw at them. So it's going to be the preacher on the mound for the Dodgers, and he'll be opposed by right-hander Earl Wilson. The Tigers became the current king of the hill by virtue of beating the 1975 Cincinnati Reds in our last game by a score of 5-2. to two. The Brooklyn Dodgers have only played one game in the tournament so far. They lost to the Cincinnati Reds way back in game five or six uh, by a score of four to three to the Reds, and they've been waiting for their second chance uh, ever since. So today they get it. It'll be Preacher Rowe against Earl Wilson. Let's look at the standings, and then we'll go to today's starting lineups. So our standings look like this. The 77 Red Sox and the 75 Reds are tied with four wins each. The 52 Yankees are in second place with three wins. Then we have three teams, the 50 Phillies, the 74 A's, and the 80 Phillies tied for third with two wins each. Fourth place is the 60 Pirates, the 59 White Sox, and the 68 Tigers with one win each. And then there's four teams that haven't gotten off the schneid yet. The 73 Mets, the 77 Royals, the 74 Dodgers, and the 52 Dodgers. So with a win today, the 52 Dodgers enter a tie for fourth with one win. With a win today, the 68 Tigers enter a tie for third with two wins. So there's each of these teams need to get, get going. And so a win will be most welcome to either one of them. Let's look at today's starting lineup. Visiting Dodgers, Jackie Robinson leads off at second base. Pee Wee Reese bats second at shortstop. Duke Snyder bats third in center field. Roy Campanella bats fourth. He'll be behind the plate. Andy Pafko bats fifth. He'll be in left field. Gil Hodges bats sixth. He'll be at first base. Carl Frillo bats seventh. He'll be in right field. And Billy Cox Bats eighth at third base. Preacher Rowe is on the mound. And the Preacher in 1952 had 27 games, 25 starts, eight complete games, good for 159 innings of work. He was 11 and 2 on the season. For the 68 Tigers, Dick McAuliffe leads off at second base. Al Kaline. Uh, will be at first base today because the left-hander is starting and Mayo Smith platooned Norm Cash basically in 68. So K-Line moves in from right field to play first base. Jim Northrup will bat third. He'll be in right field. Willie Horton bats fourth. He'll be in left. Bill Freehand bats fifth. He'll catch. Mickey Stanley bats sixth. He'll be in center field. Don Wirt bats seventh, he'll play third base. And Ray Euler bats eighth, he'll play shortstop in today's game. Earl Wilson's on the mound. You can see there's some considerable power on his card. He had seven home runs in the 1968 season in just 88 at-bats. He was uh, 13-12 and 12 in 1968, 33 starts, 10 complete games, Good for 224 innings of work. King of the Hill, we have a couple of D6s and a D20. And then we also have a full deck of fast action cards ready to go. So we have kind of a, a smorgasbord of items to do our simulation here. This is Fall Classic Baseball. And... Coming up is Jackie Robinson to face Earl Wilson and get our 
Game going. Let's see what kind of stuff Earl Wilson has today. He has B stuff. And the Preacher, Preacher Row has B stuff as well. So we got a couple of Bs. And the first pitch of the game to Jackie goes like this. It is a 26. And that's hitting the air to right field. Jim Northrup is under it, and he makes the catch for out number one. And we're underway at Tiger Stadium. Pee Wee Reese comes to the plate. Wilson winds and deals. And Pee Wee hits it on a line at Mickey Stanley in center field, and he makes the catch for out number two. Duke Snyder comes to the plate. Brooklyn's looking for their first win here in game 21 of the tournament, the pitch is swung on by Duke and hit on the ground to Ray Euler. He cuts it off from going up the middle, plants, and throws to K-Line at first for out number three. And the Dodgers go down one, two, three in inning number one. The Preacher comes on the mound now to face McAuliffe, K-Line, and Northrup in inning number one. He kicks and deals, and that is... Strike three swinging, Preacher Rowe gets him on a bender. Rowe was a finesse pitcher, kind of a junk baller, but a good one. And now it's K-Line. The pitch from Rowe to K-Line is swung on by Al and grounded to Billy Cox. At third base, he moves to his left, plants, and throws to Gil Hodges for out number two. Jimmy Northrup now. Rowe winds and deals to the Tiger right fielder. Ground ball, Jackie Robinson to his left, gloves it, plants, and throws to Hodges. And we have a pair of one, two, three innings to get our game started today. We go to the second with no score in Detroit. Earl Wilson in inning number two will face Campanella, Pafco, and Hodges for Brooklyn. Wilson winds and deals to Campy. Hit in the air to center. This is going to drive Mickey Stanley back, but that's the field you don't want to hit the ball to in Tiger Stadium. Funny room there, and he makes the catch for out number one. Andy Pafko now. Wilson winds and deals. And it's a base hit for Andy Pafko to right field. Ferrillo, I'm sorry, Northrop collects it and throws it back in. Path goes aboard. There's one on with one out for Brooklyn. In inning number two, the Tiger infield moves to double play depth. Wilson the stretch. And the delivery to Hodges is outside. He missed with a bender. So that's ball four. Two on now for Brooklyn. And here comes Ferrillo. Wilson the stretch checks the runners. The pitch to Carl is hit on the ground to Don Wirt. Wirt knocks it down, picks it up. His only play is to first base. K-Line makes a nice stretch, and they retire Ferrillo. Runners move up. Path go to third. Hodges to second. With two outs in the second inning, here's Billy Cox. Preacher Row would be next. Wilson, the stretch, and the delivery to Cox. Hey, struck him out on the broccoli cauliflower medley. Gas. We go to the bottom of the second. Wilson works his way out of that trouble spot. And it's now the bottom of the second with no score in Detroit. The Tigers will send up Horton, Freehan, and Stanley. Row winds and deals. We have our first ballpark check. And here's our ballpark card. And a 13. Is hit into... Foul territory, first base side. Gil Hodges going to make the catch for out number one in the second. Here's 
Bill Freehand. Spent some time in the cleanup spot in 68, but I went with Horton instead today. Roll wines and deals. Ball four to Freehand. Tigers first base runner with one out in the second now, and Mickey Stanley comes up. Roll the stretch and the delivery is a base hit for Mickey Stanley to center field. Stopping at second is freehand. The Tigers have two on now with one out. Just like the Dodgers did in the top of the inning. Let's see if they come up with a run. Row the stretch and the pitch to third baseman Don Wirt is a base hit. Uh, freehand around second. He will be held and the bases are dripping with Tigers with one out. Euler comes to the plate. Uh, they're going to play it in at double played up. The Tigers are, or I'm sorry, the Dodgers are. Euler at the plate, roll the stretch, and the delivery to Ray. Hey, struck him out. Broccoli and cauliflower all mixed together with a little nacho cheese and some breadcrumbs. Mmm, gassy. Earl Wilson now with the bases still full and two outs. Manager Charlie Dressen looking a little nervous in that Dodger dugout. With Earl Wilson at the plate, roll the stretch and the delivery. And it's a base hit for Earl Wilson. Scoring is freehand. Uh, stopping at third is Stanley. And Wilson has himself an RBI single. It's 1-0 Detroit. McAuliffe up now for the lefty-lefty matchup. And I'm thinking I'm going to get the bullpen going here. This just doesn't feel like a good situation for Brooklyn. Uh, so, it's going to be... Ralph Branca starting to throw in the Dodger bullpen. It seems like he gave up a home run once. I can't remember quite exactly who it was to. Row to McAuliffe and the delivery. There is trouble and a base hit for Dick McAuliffe. Tiger's going to be uh, going to extend the lead. Scoring is Stanley. Wirt to third. He will be waved home. And here comes the throw. It's to right field. Carl Ferrillo going to make the throw home. All the way to Bert, to Roy Campanella. And he is out at the plate. Bert Campanella is, is watching from the stands. So Wirt is shot down at the plate 9-2 to two for out number three in the second inning. But the Tigers get a couple of runs off of Preacher Rowe. Uh, an RBI single for McAuliffe closes out the scoring. The Tigers get two on four hits. They leave two. And we go to the third. The Tigers have opened up a 2 nothing lead. All right. So Wilson's got a little bit of a cushion. The Preacher coming to the plate to lead off the Brooklyn third. Jackie Robinson will follow, and then Pee Wee Reese. The pitch from Wilson to Rowe. Hey, struck him out on a bender. He looked bad on that one. He didn't come within three feet of that breaking ball, and now it's Jackie Robinson. Jackie's 0 for 1. The pitch from Wilson. Hit to center, but not deep. Mickey Stanley, with plenty of room, makes the catch for out number 2. Dodgers got to start pulling the ball. You can't hit it to center in this park. Tough to get it out of here. The pitch is ball four, and Pee Wee draws a walk. That's going to bring up Duke Snyder. Tempting to run him, but with that short porch and right, I think we're going to let Duke take a shot at it. Wilson the stretch and the delivery, and a base hit for the Duke. Goes to left field with two outs. Pee Wee Reese is going to go to third. There's Dodgers at the corners now for Campy. And Earl Wilson has himself another hot spot. Reese at third, Snyder at first. 
Can't be at the plate. Wilson, the stretch and the delivery to him is grounded to Ray Euler. He's going to go the short way to McAuliffe, and that's going to retire Brooklyn in the third. So the Dodgers leave two more and fail to score. We go to the bottom of three. With your score, Detroit two, Brooklyn nothing. K-Line, Northrop, and Horton coming up in the Tiger third. The pitch to K-Line is a base hit to center. Duke Snyder collects it and throws it back in. Northrop comes up now. Lefty-lefty matchup. Dodgers playing for a double play. The pitch from Preacher is hit to left toward the line. Pafko will get there and make the catch. K-line retreats to first. And there's one down in the third. Here's Horton. The pitch to him is a base hit. Off of Rose Glove, rolls toward Reese. Nobody's got a play, he just sticks it in his pocket. There's two on for the Tigers with one out in the third, and Bronca's going to get throwing again. Freehand at the plate. He walked and scored last inning. Row the stretch and the delivery to Bill. Hit on the ground to Pee Wee Reese. Reese goes to Jackie Robinson for one, and the relay to Hodges, not in time. Freehand beats the rap at first. K-Line advances to third. Horton is retired 6-4 on the fielder's choice, and Freehand is safe at first. So there's Tigers at the corners now with two outs for Mickey Stanley. Roll the stretch and the delivery to Stanley. There's a base hit to right field. Scoring is K-Line. It's 3-0 Tigers. And... Freehand will stop at second. So there's still two on. Here comes Wirt and Preacher Rowe maybe facing his last batter. Chuck Dressen is on the top step of the dugout. Rowe the stretch and the pitch to Wirt. Base hit down Wirt. To left field. Uh, and they are waving Bill Freehand. Andy Pafko's throw home is in time. They got him at the plate. A 7-2 put out on the single by Wirt. But the Tigers get another run, and after three, they lead 3 nothing. Something interesting here. The Tigers have eight hits. All of them are singles off of Preacher Row. Uh, and they've made two outs on the base paths. Of course, both with two outs, but even so, could be worse for the Dodgers. We go to the fourth. It's Detroit three, Brooklyn nothing. Pafco, Hodges, and Ferrillo coming up in the Brooklyn fourth. Wilson winds and deals to Handy Andy. Ground ball, Wirt gloves it by the bag and throws to K-Line for out number one. Gil Hodges now. Wilson winds and deals. Popped him up. This wouldn't be a home run in a phone booth. Dick McAuliffe on the infield dirt is going to take it for out number two. And with two outs and nobody aboard, it's Ferrillo. Wilson winds and delivers. Popped him up. One more chance for Dick McAuliffe. Just barely on the outfield grass. Makes the catch for out number three. So <clears throat> we go to the bottom of four. It's the Tigers three and the Dodgers nothing. Euler, Wilson, and McAuliffe coming up. Bronca ready in the Dodger bullpen. Row kicks and deals, and there's a base hit for Ray Euler, and here comes Charlie Dressen. He has seen enough of the preacher today. So we get Ralph Bronca, and this is sort of a theme with the 52 Dodgers. 
pitching was a problem all year. What they did was they slugged their way to the pennant, but pitching was a problem. It was a problem in the World Series, and Dressen was able to manage his way around it to a 3-2 series lead. Going back to Brooklyn, and the Yankees were able to take games six and seven and take the series. So let's see what kind of stuff Branca has. He has B stuff. He is, of course, a right-hander. 16 games, seven starts, two complete, 61 innings. He was 4-2 in 1952, and here comes Earl Wilson. Could have him bunt, but no. The pitch to him is hit by Wilson to right. Toward the line is Carl Ferrillo, and he makes the catch for out number one. Returning to first is Ray Euler, and now it's McAuliffe. The pitch from Branca to McAuliffe. Hit on the ground to Pee Wee at short. He cuts it off from going up the middle. His only play is to first. Euler slides into second safely, and McAuliffe is retired on the ground out 6-3. And that brings up K-Line. Bronca the stretch and the delivery to Al K-Line is to right. Carl Ferrillo in his tracks is going to make the catch for out number three. So Bronca restores order in the third inning. We go to the fifth. In the fourth inning, we go to the fifth. Remember, friends, there's three kinds of people. Those that can do math and those that cannot. And... As we go to the top of the fifth, it's the Tigers three and the Dodgers nothing. Cox, Ralph Branca, and Jackie Robinson will be coming to the plate in inning number five. Get the preacher out of there. Here we go. Okay, so Billy Cox is first. Earl Wilson winds and deals. And there's a base hit for the Dodger. Third baseman to center field. Mickey Stanley throws it back in. And maybe there's a start for Brooklyn. Bronca at the plate. The pitch to him. He squares to bunt. He gets it down. It's back to Earl Wilson. It's a good one. Wilson is going to throw it to McAuliffe, covering at first, and Cox moves to second base. Brings up Robinson with one out and a man in scoring position. Wilson the stretch. Jackie's 0 for 2, the pitch. Ground ball hit to Dick McAuliffe. McAuliffe gloves it and throws to K-Line at first. That will advance Cox to third base with two outs, and now it's Pee Wee. Duke Snyder would be next. The pitch from Wilson to Pee Wee is hit on the ground to Don Wirt. He's up with it and fires to K-Line for out number three. We're halfway through this one with your score. Tigers three, Dodgers nothing. Bronca out for inning number two of work. He'll face Northrop Horton and Freehan in the Tiger fifth. Bronca winds and deals, and there's a base hit to center field for Northrop. Snyder gets it back in. That's the 10th single for the Tigers in this game. No extra base hits so far. Bronca the stretch, the delivery to Horton. Hey, struck him out on a bender. One down in the fifth. Freehand up. Bronca the stretch, the pitch to Bill Freehand. He hit him. He just dotted Bill Freehand. And I think Freehand had more than 20 hit by pitches in 68. I think I remember that somewhere. So there's two Tigers on with one out in the bottom of the fifth and Mickey Stanley coming up. That's going to get Joe Black starting in the bullpen along with... Yeah, I guess Joe Black. Joe Black all by his lonesome. So it's Stanley up with one out and two on. Northrop at second and freehand at first. Bronca the stretch and the delivery. 
Stanley swings and hits it to center. This is into right center and deep. Snyder is going to get there and make the catch. Tagging is Northrop. He's going to advance to third. Freehand holds on at first, and there's Tigers at the corners now with two outs for Wirt. Euler would be next. Bronca the stretch and the delivery. Hey, struck out Wirt with baked beans. Gas. Second strikeout for Branca. We go to the sixth with your score. Detroit, three, Brooklyn, nothing. You know, you get the feeling here. Detroit is failing to put Brooklyn away, and there's a lot of offense in those bats for the Dodgers. I don't know. The Tigers have left. Two, four, five, six, seven batters in five innings. Sometimes that comes back to haunt. It's Snyder, Campanella, and Pafco. Three, four, five hitters in Brooklyn's lineup here in the sixth. Wilson wines and deals. Hey, struck him out with pork and beans. Gas, little high heat that the Duke couldn't catch up with. Here's Campy. Campy's 0 for 2. The pitch to him. Hey, struck him out on a bender. Wilson humping up on the fast on the uh, breaking ball. And Pafco, 1 for 2. The pitch to Handy Andy. Ground ball. Dick McAuliffe. He's up with it and throws to K line. And that will retire the Dodgers. 1, 2, 3 in the 6. We go to the bottom of 6. With your score, Tigers 3, Dodgers nothing. It's Euler, Wilson, and McAuliffe in Branca's third inning of work. All righty, so Euler is 1 for 2. Branca's stamina is something we should look at here. Oh, he's got 19. Before that might become an issue, he's faced nine batters, so he's okay right now. The pitch to Ray Euler. Hey, struck him out. He humped up on that one. Earl Wilson comes to the plate. Branca to Wilson. Hey, struck him out on a bender. Wilson didn't come within three feet of that one. Two down. And now McAuliffe. Brank has done a good job here. And, of course, that's going to be the kiss of death. The pitch is hit on the ground to Pee Wee Reese. Pee Wee charges in good shape, gloves it, and fires to Hodges for out number three in the sixth. We've played six complete. Tigers three, Dodgers nothing. It's a good game. They're right on the edge of getting back in it if they can get some hits. And uh, we're in the seventh. In the Tiger bullpen, which is starting to get active, it's Fred Lasher and John Warden, lefty-righty, double-barreled action, just the way Mayo Smith likes it whenever he's in the Motor City. And Hodges is up 0 for 1. Wilson winds and deals to Gil Hodges. Ground ball, Dick McAuliffe. Dick gloves it and throws to K-Line for out number 1. That's 7 in a row, retired by Earl Wilson. His stamina is for 32 hitters. He has faced 24. Ferrillo's 0 for 2. The pitch from Wilson. Hit to right. Jimmy Northrup back a few steps, but he's got room and makes the catch for out number two. Billy Cox now. Branca standing in the on-deck circle, but nobody really believes that's going to happen. The pitch to Cox. Hit on the ground to Ray Euler. Euler from the hole fires to K-line, and they get Cox by a step at first. Earl Wilson is throwing a three-hitter through seven. All three of them singles. He's walked two and struck out four. Branca is out for inning number four of work. He is due to lead off the eighth inning. 
So this is likely it for Ralph Brankham. K-Line, Northrop, and Horton, the two, three, four hitters in the Tiger lineup coming up in the seventh. It is hit for K-Line to right center and deep. It's going to one-hop the wall. ferrillo has got to go run it down. K-Line around first, cruising into second. He's got a leadoff double, and that's going to bring up Jimmy Northrop. Tigers with a chance to put this one away here if they can get the job done. In the bullpen, it's Chris Van Chike, Syke. Chris Van Syke, Cook, Chris Van Cook, and Joe Black, lefty ready, double barreled action. Just the way that Charlie Dressen likes it when he's in Motown. All right, so it's Northrop against Branca, the pitch. Jimmy Northrop pops it up. In foul territory, it's Gil Hodges, and he's going to make the catch for out number one. Now is Horton. Horton is one for three. First base is open. K-line at second. Brank of the stretch and the delivery to Horton. Hey, struck him out. Five strikeouts for Branca. That's going to bring up freehand. Ralph's airing it out because he knows he's done after this inning. Freehand is 0 for 1. He has walked and he has been hit by a pitch. The pitch is hit to center. Harmless fly to Duke Snyder. Routine. He makes the catch for out number 3. And the Tigers are turned away again in the 7th. The leadoff double. They don't even advance him. We go to the 8th with your score. Detroit 3 and Brooklyn nothing. The winner faces the 52 Dodgers who are in LaGuardia waiting to punch their ticket to either Detroit or are they going to stay in town and play at Brooklyn in our next game. Branca is due. He will not bat to lead off the uh, eighth inning, but look at the job he did. He went four innings, gave up two hits. He hit a batter, struck out five, no runs. So some quality long relief from Ralph Branca. And we're going to get a pinch hitter now. And that is going to be Rocky Nelson. Who later on, of course, got himself a World Series ring with the 1960 Pittsburgh Pirates. He may have been on the 55 Dodger team, although I don't believe he was. You can tell me in the comments if you know. That would be interesting to find out. Uh, so Nelson's going to lead off. He was a 256 hitter in 1952. Jackie Robinson is next, and then Pee Wee Reese. We're in the eighth, and the Dodgers are down three. Pitch from Earl Wilson. Nelson swings and hits it to center. This is going to drive Stanley back, but he's got room, and there's one down in the eighth. The Tigers are five outs from remaining the king of the hill and taking on those Yankees. Uh, Earl Wilson has retired ten in a row now. Jackie Robinson at the plate. Wilson winds and deals. Jackie swings and hits it to center. Mickey Stanley coming in and makes the catch for out number two. That's 11 in a row retired for Wilson. Pee Wee's coming up now. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Snyder would be next, the pitch. And Pee Wee draws another walk. There's two on. I'm sorry, there's a man on with two outs. And the, the faces are going to change in the Tiger bullpen. It's John Wyatt and John Hiller, lefty-righty, double-barreled action. Snyder comes to the plate. Campy would be next. Stamina. We are at 28-29. This will be 29. Hitter number 20. No, hitter number 30. I can count. Remember, friends, three kinds of people. And Wilson can go 32 before that might become an issue. Here's the Duke. And there's a base hit for Duke Snyder to right field. Drops in front 
of Jimmy Northrup stopping at second is Reese, and that's going to bring up Campanella with a chance to tie the game. Mayo Smith is going to let Wilson go for it here. Two outs in the eighth, tying run at the plate. Campy is 0 for 3, the pitch from Wilson. Campy swings and hits it on the ground to Wirt. He gloves it and steps on the bag. Four out, number three. Wilson continues his shutout. He's got a four-hitter going. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's the Tigers three and the Dodgers uh, nothing. We have a new Dodger pitcher coming on. It's Joe Black. Rookie of the Year in 1952 in the National League. Let's see what kind of stuff Joe has today. He'll face Stanley Wirt and Euler. Joe has B stuff. And here comes the Mick. Mickey Stanley is two for three. The pitch from Black. Hit to right. Ferrillo is there and one down. Wirt is two for three. Black kicks and deals. Hey, struck him out. Gas. Two down now, and it's Euler. And the pitch to Ray. Black hit, gets him to hit it to right. Dying quail coming on is Carl Ferrillo, and he's going to make the catch for out number three. So the... Tigers are turned away in the eighth. Going to get the defensive move now that Mayo Smith used to make. Uh, when they were ahead in the late innings, Cash is going to come in. He is going to play first base and bat in Horton's spot. So Horton's going to be gone. K-Line goes to right field. Northrop goes to left field. And Earl Wilson is coming back out to try and finish this ball game. He is throwing a four-hit shutout, all of them singles. He's walked three now and struck out four. He has done a number on these Dodger bats. And so he is to batter number 31 Wyatt and Hiller are ready in the bullpen he can go one more before he's in that fatigue zone Pafco Hodges and Ferrillo 5-6-7 coming in the Dodger ninth inning Dodgers need three to stay alive the pitch to Pafco is grounded to Don Wirt Wirt gloves it and throws to Norm Cash for out number one in the ninth. Are the Dodgers going to get shut out? Gil Hodges is 0 for 2. The pitch to him from Wilson. Is grounded to Wirt. He gloves it to his left. Plants and throws to Cash for out number two. Last chance saloon is Carl Ferrillo. For the Dodgers, 0 for 3 for Scoonge in this game. Cox would be next, the pitch. And it's hit to right. Routine for Al Kaline, and that will end the ball game. The 68 Tigers remain the king of the hill. Let's give you the totals, and then we'll take a quick look at the standings before we depart for the home standing and victorious 1968 Tigers. Three runs. 11 hits, and they committed no errors. The Dodgers, no runs. Four hits, and they committed no errors. The winning pitcher is Earl Wilson. For his root-going performance, he is 1-0. and Preacher Rowe is going to take the loss. He is 0-1. We give an honorable mention to Ralph Branca. The MVP of the game is Earl Wilson. He not only threw a shutout, but he drove in uh, a run as well. He was one for three. So Wilson gets the uh, MVP of the game. Now let's look at the standings. The Tigers 
by virtue of winning, have entered a three, a four-way tie. Excuse me, for third place, they are tied with two wins with the 50 Phillies, the 74 A's, the 68 Tigers, and the 80 Phillies. Our next game, the 68 Tigers will be hosting the 52 Yankees, who have three wins. The Yankees win that game, they'll be tied for first. If the Tigers win that game, the Tigers will be tied for second. So there's a whole lot on the line in our next game. Hope you'll join me. It's going to be Joe Sparma on the mound for Detroit against to be announced for the 52 Yankees. And I do appreciate your, might be Allie Reynolds. I got to take a look. Um, I hope you'll join me. I do appreciate your support of my channel. Don't forget to check out channel membership. The link is in the description for this video for all the goodies that you get. Thanks for being with me. Hope you have a good evening. So long, everybody.